Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. First of all, sorry for the last video, I uh, messed up my audio settings and the audio was uh, sounding horrible. Hopefully my voice is sounding really, really good right now. Let me know in the comments if this is now fixed. I would really, really appreciate it. Now, uh, today we're gonna be talking about a really, really cool thing called Arnold Stand-Ins. And uh, this Arnold Stand-Ins are a super powerful tool, especially if you're gonna be doing really complex scenes. So imagine you wanna do like a big CD, you wanna have a lot of like skyscrapers, V, and stuff like that having to import all of those things here into Maya would definitely like just crash the whole scene so I'm gonna be using two of the models that I did on the free weekend classes that we had a couple of uh, weeks ago which by the way you can check on the live section there were two classes where we sculpted uh, two little miniatures for um, for the PisoCon, which was the the Pathfinder and Starfinder like uh, convention so we got uh, this one right here let me make sure this is the one there we go, so that's a cobalt right there, very cool looking dude. And uh, we also did uh, the Guardian, which is the, like the, um, like the mascot for Pi, so the Vigilant, sorry, the Vigilant. So where is it, there we go, Vigilant. So, whoa, I actually did not want to open cheat box. There we go. So if we take a look at both of these objects, well, Vigilant's really, really big right now, but if we take a look at both of these objects, you're gonna realize that they're really, really heavy. This guy is half a million triangles, and the little cobalt guy is 300,000 polygons. So if we wanted to render a scene, let's say we wanna imagine like a, um, like an army of these kobolds attacking our poor little guardian right here, stand-ins are a perfect way to do so. So the way this works is super easy. First of all, we need to make sure to set up the proper material for this guy. So I'm gonna say uh, assign material, Arnold, AI standard surface, and with this guy, I'm gonna go for this sort of like a blue hue-ish, like rough material, something like this. And for the kobolds, I'm gonna assign, I'm gonna imagine these are like plastic toys, and I'm gonna assign like a, like a red, a dark red, semi-dark red, like the saturated again, rough color right there. So those are gonna be the colors for objects. Now, once we're happy with them, we're of course gonna freeze transformations. And on this guy, let's start with this one right here. I'm gonna select the character, make sure that he's on top of the grid right there. So that he's like standing. I'm gonna select the guy and I'm gonna go to Arnold, scene export, and we're gonna export this as dot at <laughs> dot ASS. I know, I know, I didn't name these things, they did, and I don't know why they chose that name, but that's the like the termination of the of the file note. So I'm gonna go here to the stand-ins. Uh, I got a stand-in folder, I'm gonna call this a Vigilant, Vigilant Stand-in. And we're just gonna export selection. You can actually export things such as uh, uh, animation, uh, I'm not sure if simulation, but you can export like geometries and all this sort of stuff. And we're gonna do the same thing for this little guy right here. So we're gonna get him into the center. We're gonna freeze transformation, Arnold, scene export, and we're gonna export this as an at dot at ASS. And this is gonna be called Cobalt. So by doing this, we've successfully created the stand-ins for the elements. Now we're gonna start a new scene and I'm gonna load in the Vigilant first. I'm gonna go here to Arnold. We're gonna be using this stand-in option. And as you can see, we just get this very like super simple bounding box. But if we select the bounding box and we go here to the little folder, we're gonna be able to select the Vigilant and now we get the Vigilant in. You're not seeing anything, and I know this this might sound like really, really like weird, but if we go to lights, let's just add a very quick sky dome light here. Let's add our very basic, I got the blocky photo studio right here. If we just add some very basic uh, like lights right there and we render, what's gonna happen is the vigilance right there. So how does the standings work? It's really, really interesting. What's happening is we've basically exported all of the geometry into a file and at render time, the software, in this case Arnold, is gonna load that like image or that, or that, that file into the render. But it's really, really freaking fast. So if you're gonna be doing uh, like renders for like, um, like you're just decimated products from Sievers and stuff like that, stand-ins are an excellent way to to generate the uh, the like the necessary geometry. So let's create a plane right here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in another stand-in, Arnold stand-in, and this stand-in is of course gonna be our little cobalt right here. So we go to this guy right here and here and cobalt. There we go. So the bounding box, as you can see, displays the, the size of the of the cobalt figure. In this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the options here to shade it, just to see where he's facing. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna move him to the side. Let's go right around there. I'm gonna go around the character 
And what I want to do now is I'm going to move its pivot point to the center of the object. So the, the standing things like this, this blocks right here, they're pretty much like uh, any, any other object. They have transform information and stuff like that. So I'm just going to move them right here. And what I can do now is I'm going to go back to bounding box so that we don't have to occupy as much memory. I'm going to press Control D, rotate this slightly, and then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate the rotation. And as you can see now, I've successfully created a small little army of kobolds that are surrounding my character. It doesn't look like much right now. Let me save this real quick because uh, even though we're not working with geometry, it's still a little bit heavy. But look at this, like Maya, Maya doesn't, like it's not even budging because Maya is not actually thinking about all of that geometry. All of that geometry is gonna be uh, thought of until we get to the render time. Now, if all of these topics are sounding a little bit advanced for you, my friends, remember that we have Intro to Maya courses and a lot of different courses involving rendering, ZBrush, like all of the things that you need to know with Skillshare. Hey guys, Abraham here. I just want to remind you guys that we upload all of our courses to Skillshare. Skillshare is this amazing site where you can access a ton of different content to learn, improve, and grow as an artist. We have all of our courses available to watch and learn from right now in Skillshare. You can check the description down here. And Skillshare is offering one free month trial to their premium membership. With this membership, you're going to be able to access all of our courses and watch and learn all of the amazing things that we cover with all of the softwares. So what are you waiting for? Check Skillshare down here below. Now, the moment of truth. Do we, are we going to get the result that we're expecting right here? And um, I've done some tests, so hopefully we will. Now, one thing we can do here is we can actually change the GPU or change to GPU render, because otherwise the encoding while I'm recording is going to like freak out. So let's give a quick render here. And let's see what we get. Uh, let's close this. And over here on the render, it's loading all of the, or it should be loading all of the elements. Doesn't seem like it's doing it. Let's do it again. And there we go. Look at that. So at the render time, we're getting like each of this was 300 polygons. So we got like two or three million polygons right now being displayed on the screen without having any, any issue whatsoever. Now, here's another cool thing about all of this guys right here. I'm going to grab uh, again another one. I'm going to do another circle of cobbles right here. So this one's going to be, again, let's move the pivot point to the center of the grid. And one of the things that we can do is, if you guys know, we also have the duplicated special inside of, of Maya. So let's say we want, I don't know, like, uh, let's say like a, like a weird number, 27 copies, okay? So 36, 360 divided by 27 gives us 13.3. So if I select that object right there and I say file, duplicate or edit, a duplicate special, and we say, I wanna, I wanna have 26 copies because I already have one, and I want you to rotate them 13.3 degrees, and I hit apply, there we go. We're gonna get a new like whole like line of kobolds right there holding our character hostage. Let's do another one right here. I'm gonna push this one again. Again, we need to push this thing back to the center, otherwise the, the whole thing is not gonna work. And let's say we want 40 of this on the on the last line. So for 40, we would need 360 divided by 40. That's a nine. There we go. I'm not really good at math, so you guys are gonna have to excuse me there. So I'm gonna say file, uh, or sorry, edit, duplicate a special. And we want 39 copies because we already have one and we're going to do nine degrees and hit a duplicate special. And as you can see now, we've successfully created this whole like army of kobolds that is surrounding our character. But that's not all. I'm going to grab all of the kobolds. I'm not going to grab the vigilant, just the kobolds right there. And these are objects. These are objects, like normal objects. So what I can do is I can use the bonus tools. You guys know about the bonus tools. I've talked about them before. If you don't know about them, look at the bonus tools video here on the channel. I've done a couple of them. And we're going to go to modify, randomize, transform basics. And one thing that I can do, for instance, it can, is I can do a random scale. So some of them are going to be really, really small, and some of them are going to be really, really big. And that's going to give me a really nice like uh, effect right there. I can also do a very slight rotation. I'm going to do like a minus 5 to 5 rotation on only the y-axis so that some of them are slightly like, oh, actually, no, this is not gonna work because the pivot points are in the center, so, so I'm not gonna be able to do that. Uh, what I can do though, no, I think that's it. I think just with scale should be more than enough. Now let's grab the plane. I'm gonna push the plane up a little bit so just so that we get like some overlap with the, with the floor of the, of the characters right there. And let's save real quick. Let's go to our shotgun. We don't have a shotgun, so let's create a camera. Panels, look to select it. And we're gonna create a very, very cool like shot right here where all of my kobolds are about to attack the Vigilant right there on the center. So imagine like a full army of creatures about to attack. Well, if this is, uh, hopefully this will work as I'm expecting this to work, I'm gonna say Arnold, a render, 
And let's wait for this to work. There we go. Look at that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So again, add render time and look how fast that was. 0.1 second or one second. It took the whole thing one second to load in the references from all of these elements and the render is done. It's just done. Let's go to um, our camera right here. Let's go to common. I'm going to change this to one uh, or 1080. There we go. And on the adaptive sampling, I am going to enable adaptive sampling. I'm going to say something like six so that we get uh, a little bit of a cleaner effect. And now if we render, we're going to get more resolution. But do you see how fast this loads? Because again, you're not asking Maya to send all of this information into Arnold for Arnold to render. Arnold is already going for that information into the file and it's getting this like ready, ready to go. <laughs> I mean, this looks freaking good. Uh, I'm going to rotate this guy a little bit so that he's uh, facing us. I'm not sure why the outliner is behaving like that. I'm not sure if I'm pressing something on my keyboard or something. There we go. Let's do another render right there. Perfect. Now, you guys want to bring this to the next level? Let's do a, a little bit of a cinematic shot right here. Now, right now, these guys are not textures, but you can do this with texture characters. Like all of the textures that you connected on the original ASS file will be transferred to this uh, ASS stand-in. So if you already have a character, again, that's rigged, moving, or whatever, you can export this as stand-ins, and it's a great, great way to optimize your scenes. This is something that I recently discovered, by the way. It's not something that I knew from, from a long time ago. It's very, very new, but I'm really, really impressed with the things that you can do. I'm already imagining all kinds of things that I can do with this to um, to make my whole process a lot faster. Now, keep in mind that all of this information will be saved on a, on a file on your system, so that might make it a little bit uh, like, what's the word? Like, um, uh, you're, you're gonna need more like storage uh, effects. There we go. So we're gonna go for a, a sort of like sunset effect. Uh, I don't wanna see the, the camera or I don't, I don't wanna see the HDR on the camera. So we're gonna go with something like this. There we go. Uh, you can of course move any of this individually if you need to. And then I'm gonna add a light. So Arnold lights, area light. I'm gonna add an area light coming from over here. Again, kind of like, like a sunset sort of effect. I was gonna use color temperature to make this warmer. Right now, we're not gonna see anything. Why are we not gonna see anything? Because as you guys know, when we're working with exposure, we definitely need to crank the exposure quite a bit. So let's do like a minus 15. Sorry, not minus 15, 15. There we go. So now we're getting this very, very cool, again, sunset effect on the, on the back of the characters. Uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make it a little bit softer, so I'm gonna push this to the side, a little bit like this, and then I'm gonna do a, a little bit of a, of a replacement here. Let's do a rim light. Rim lights are always cool, so I'm gonna add another one of these lights on this side, a lot softer. This one's gonna be uh, like cool. So we're gonna bring a cool color right there. There we go, just to just to give some some highlight to these guys over here. And now I'm going to replace, he's, he's got a, like a crystal on its hands, but I'm going to replace that with a little sphere. I'm going to go to the stand-in and I'm going to turn on a shade it so that we can see where the character is. That way I can grab my a sphere right here and I can position my sphere on top of the crystal. And then that sphere, I'm going to change it. I'm going to make an Arnold lights. I'm going to make a mesh light. I'm going to make it col use color temperature. I, I do want to like make the light visible and I am going to make it really, really cool. So now we increase the exposure again to something like a 15. It's going to look like he's like casting a magic spell or something. Let's wait for this to update. And what we should see right there, it's again just a, like a sphere covering that guy and, uh, and generating a very, very cool effect. Hopefully this doesn't crash because I didn't save. Uh, let's stop that one right there. Let's close this. Let's save before anything bad happens. There we go. And let's do another render. Okay, let's just give it a little bit of time for this thing to compile. You think, as you see right here, it's compiling shaders. Now we're using something a little bit more complex, which is this mesh light. Uh, but yeah, as soon as this is done, we should get a very, very good result. So I'm gonna stop the video real quick. Oh, there we go, cool. It's the, the problem was the perspective shade. Let's go over there. There we go, look at that. So now we get a very, very cool effect. I'm um, of course gonna go to the mesh light. I think 15 is a little bit too much. Let's go back to 12. And let's render. That looks a lot more like, uh, actually that looks just, uh, still a little bit too much, I would say, like he's gonna go blind. So let's go to like a 10. That's way more manageable. There we go. 
cool so yeah that's pretty much it guys now if you guys want uh just a quick reminder well actually we got a couple of announcements so thank you for holding or hanging on till the very end of this video first thing we got portfolio review this weekend so if you want to submit your portfolio the link for google drive is down here and we also have the discord channel available so that you can submit it there second thing this models that you're seeing right here are completely free they're available for free and you're going to find a gumroad link down here you can go to gumroad and you're going to find this models as well available for free i'm going to tweak a little bit with the render we're going to play a little bit with the render to create something um a little bit more interesting but yeah arnold stand-ins the uh, file format looks very very weird it just says ass but uh it's super super handy my friends so hopefully you guys will introduce this into your workflow as well and um that's pretty much it remember if you want to support the channel if you want to support us make sure to leave a like share subscribe and check our premium courses that you can find as well down here in the description thank you very much my friends i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye